Thank you. I'm very pleased to be here this morning and share our story. After hearing the, the three speakers that we had earlier, I understand that I am, want to go back and reorganize some of the things that I have in my presentation, um, just to make it, I think, more impactful. But we started on our journey some time ago, and I'm going to just start today by sharing a little bit about who we are and then move quickly into the work that we're doing. But before I do that, I would like to introduce two other members of my team, very important members of my team who are here. Melanie Bruins is in the back. She is our Chief Talent Officer at the organization. And Becky Santowski is our HR Manager. And we're, I'm very pleased that they're here as well. Whenever you talked about the triple aim, I, I was very pleased to hear that included because it is significantly important. In 2010, when we were working with our board and rewriting a new strategic plan, we actually looked at our vision and mission statement. And what you will see in this vision and mission statement is the triple A. And that was before we were then being paid based upon the outcomes. But we wanted to include that because we needed to educate all of our employees to the changes that were coming. Just recently, in April of 2017, we added the fourth component, which is the quadruple aim. And that is, how do we support our caregivers? Um, if you think about traumatic incidents that can happen, um, I think about mostly about working in an emergency room and some of the things that come into the emergency room. You have your physicians and your physician assistants and your staff that when they go home after there's been something traumatic happen on a shift, they don't forget about that. It goes with them. And so we really have to change the way we are supporting all of those who are caregivers. And I encourage you to think about it also from the standpoint of supporting all of your employees regardless of what your business is. Our mission statement has been the same. It's never changed. We offer services across a full continuum. We do fit, focus on patient-centered decision-making. Um, we also focus on respecting each other and respecting those that we're caring for. I learned some things today that I want to include as we move forward because I think it can make this even more impactful. We do have behavior standards. We do ask that everyone follows those behavior standards and we have um, just implemented, I would say probably seven years ago, we started very softly and subtly, and three years ago, very intensely, process improvement. And that process improvement gets at allowing those who are providing the work and doing the work to make the changes that need to be made within their workspace, which also supports them feeling much more engaged and much more empowered. This is our service area. So we do see Dodge County as our service area. Um, we are more than a hospital. Our name is a hospital, but one of the things that's important to us from a historical perspective is the fact that we are two hospitals that merged in 1972. And so it was a Catholic facility and a Lutheran facility that came together to form our organization. And so that historical component is very important to us. But we have a hospital. We also have a nursing home that's physically connected to our hospital of 115 beds. We have two um, units, one for dementia care and then one assisted living. We have a clinic structure, we have a child care, so we, we do offer all of the services. These are our accomplishments, which we're very proud of, and these are attributed to the, to the staff that we have because one of the things that I say all the time to our employees is we are fortunate because we have a brand new building to come to work every day and we have the latest and greatest equipment. We implemented robotics in September of 2016 and for an organization of our size that's pretty much unheard of. We did that through a very uh, significant donation to the organization and our staff used process improvement techniques to implement that robotics program, and we, we have been told that it was the smoothest implementation that the company has ever seen. And again, I attribute that to the staff because they are very engaged. <clears throat> now we'll talk about why we felt there was a call to action. 
In 2013, there was a health study done. And that health study, this is what we found. There were a lot of other things that we discovered, but 30% of our population admitted to binge drinking. I would speculate that there's probably a greater percentage of the population that binge drinks, but 30% admitted to that. Greater than 30% were obese. Greater than 20% were not getting their physical activity. And 15 to 20% smoking. Our county is over 88,000. And then Jefferson County, which is uh, contiguous to us, was also included in this study. And they are over 84,000. This is our health ranking. So when Paula was speaking, that was perfect that your presentation was before mine because it helps explain this a little. But out of 72 counties, for us, you see the difference from 2013 to 2016. We have some areas where we have not improved, but we have a lot of areas we have made significant improvements. Um, this was the opportunity for Dodge County. So if you look at the very dark blue, those are our statistics and our results. You look at diabetes, depression, cancer, physical pain, um, tobacco, inactivity, poor diet. We have work to do. We had work to do then. We have started to change this, but it's going to take time. What we did first was after we received that information, we actually started talking with our employee base and we started having discussions at our employee forums, which we hold on a regular basis. And one of the things that we initially talked about, because you have to help your employees make that connection between their action and what they're paying for with their health care. And once you make that connection, everything moves much more smoothly. So one of the connections that we made in the very first discussions that we had with our employees is we looked at the emergency room usage of our own employee base. And we talked about the difference between going to the emergency room and when it's appropriate. And when you go to your primary care physician or you go to an urgent care center. And that really started to have them think a little differently because we tied that with the cost of health care and the cost of their own individual contribution to their health care. Then what we did was we took this information and we put it into a presentation and we invited community leaders in. And we shared it with community leaders from across Dodge County. And we then formed a committee called Healthy Communities, Healthy Lives. And that committee was focused on how can we improve the health of our county. We formed then four subgroups. And I just want to pause here for a minute because one of the things that I think everybody knows is change is difficult. And some change is even more significantly difficult. And so we started subtly. I actually had heard a presentation by Blue Zones in St. Paul, Minnesota. They were there. At, I was at a fundraising conference, and they were one of the keynote speakers. And because I had heard about that, I wanted to bring it to our community. But I knew that we couldn't do that without building some interest and some support at the ground level. So while we started with about 12 people, in this group because we invited everyone, said we'd like you to participate. It ended up being 12. As this evolved over time, we actually ended up having 70 people on that committee. That then transitioned to a presentation by Blue Zones to share the work that they have done. Primarily at that point we were talking about Albert Lee because Albert Lee, Minnesota has been a Blue Zones community for over seven years now. They have the most outcome results to share. But this is really something that is taking hold and moving across the nation. There are states that have embraced it. So the state of Iowa has embraced this. Actually, the governor there has proclaimed that he would like them to become the healthiest state in the nation. I would like Dodge County to become the healthiest county in Wisconsin first. And then I would like to see Wisconsin be the healthiest state. I actually have talked to our governor about that and talked a little bit about some healthy competition between Iowa and Wisconsin to get there, um, because I think that's always good.
But in 2016 then, we actually joined and became a Blue Zones project. Uh, we created a team with six people. So we have six people who are employed to work on this project across our county. And then in 2017, we went through a validation process. And at BDCH, we became the first certified work site in our county. And there are some criteria that you have to go through in order to be certified. And we just recently were certified as the second certified restaurant. So our hospital cafe was certified. This is a photograph of us receiving that recognition. And then this is, these are some photographs of us receiving the recognition for worksite and also the recognition for our cafe. Other approved organizations, because this has to be a complete process, we work on built environment, we work with the schools, all of the schools in our county are involved in this effort. The restaurants that are listed here, NOLA North Grill is actually in Mayville, so the four communities that we are specifically working with are Horicon, Juno, Mayville, and Beaver Dam. And the way we chose those communities was the participation that we had that came to those original meetings and continued to come to the meetings because without leadership in those communities, we knew we weren't going to be successful. And so those were the four communities that, that showed up and really showed great interest. Um, the other lists here, uh, our cafe I talked about, and then Wayland Academy is a private school in Beaver Dam, and their cafe has been certified. Moraine Park Technical College has also been certified. And then as you look at grocery stores, because that's another area where we're working, we are actually have our first certified grocery store. This may sound like a subtle change, but I think all of us who have had children or grandchildren and you go to the grocery store and you go through the grocery line know that our children get tempted with soda, sugar, candy, you name it. All the things you really don't want them to have, especially when you're taking them home and that sugar hypes them up. Well, in a Blue Zone certified uh, rest, or grocery store, there are many things that change, but one of the things that changes is there's actually a Blue Zones line that you check out. And in that line, there's water, flavored water, fruits, vegetables, only things that if you are weak and give in to your child to have a treat, that treat is something that is acceptable to you. And so that's just one small um, item. There are a lot more for the restaurants. But in the built environment, we actually look at how safe is it for people to bike and walk? And how much are we encouraging that? And that is an area for opportunity in Beaver Dam. In Horicon, one of the areas for opportunities is they do not have a grocery store. Their grocery store, are, it really is the gas station with the convenience items. And most of those convenience items are not what we want um, our children to be eating. So now I'm gonna talk specifically about our journey to wellness. And this is where I'm gonna have um, Mel and Becky also assist. But in 2013, we looked at health insurance premium reductions for our employees. If they completed the biometrics, they completed the risk assessment, and they also participated in health coaching. We started a wellness committee. Uh, when that wellness co committee started, I sat on that committee. I no longer do. The committee is now fully functioning and moving with an employee base and Mel and Becky helping with that. Um, we then also started newsletters, which we have continued those newsletters. In 2014, we decided that we wanted to make some additional changes, so we added discounts for employees in our cafe if they were choosing healthy items. And we also planted across our system 19 organic gardens. Uh, we had one at our child care center, we had them at our assisted living facilities, and many at the hospital location. And then that produce is being used also in our kitchen. And then we encouraged walking and fitness breaks as well. And one of the things that I, I thought of as I was thinking about this yesterday as I looked out the window because people were out obviously looking at the eclipse or attempting to look at the eclipse and they had glasses so that's good but they also the number of people that were out walking we have a pond in front of our facility but walking that 
lap around the pond, that has increased significantly. Uh, we see groups of our employees that have formed MOIs, which is just a way for them to get together with a common interest and walk at their lunch break. So they'll have a short lunch, but then they'll take the majority of that break for walking. And then 2015, uh, summer activity and weight loss challenge, we had some employees, and Mel could talk about the total number of pounds lost. A thousand pounds. And that was also a way for them to build camaraderie between each other and work on things that they wanted to. I'm not going to read this whole list, but I am going to talk about um, one thing in particular. We took the deep fryers out of our kitchen. Uh, we told our staff six months prior that we were going to rip the Band-Aid off. And then one month prior, we reminded them that we were going to rip the Band-Aid off and we were going to take those fryers out of the kitchen. We did that and we actually then bought a piece of equipment that bakes food, that makes it similar consistency and taste as a replacement. But a couple months went by and someone came to me and said, do you know there's still a fryer in the back of the kitchen? And I said, no, I don't, I didn't know that. So I went over and I talked with them and they said, well, the residents in the nursing home really like their fried food. And I said, this was not to be segregated. We're to do this across the entire system. So we actually then got rid of that fryer as well. Uh, we have replaced almost all of our sugar sweetened drinks from the cafe. There still are some available in our vending machines. That's something we're talking about. When can we actually take those all out? I do hear about this. I even hear about it at board meetings because we do not offer soda at board meetings. We offer water. Um, and then we also initiated a tobacco surcharge. In 2016, we had won many awards and the staff, we were talking about how can we celebrate with the staff? What can we do to help them? So we wanted to combine that with our wellness journey. So we actually gave each staff member a Fitbit. And we told them if you already have a Fitbit, then keep this one, give it to someone you love. It can be a family member or a friend, but somebody that's going to use it. I realize it's a wearable device and I realize there are some that think those wearable devices are great and some that think they aren't. I think that wearable devices, whether they're on our arm or it's a part of our iPhone or our mobile phone, are going to be the future. And so we need to get accustomed to that. We do see our employees use them. We do see them looking at the number of steps they're getting. Um, and wanting to, to actually increase the number of steps. And right now we have, as a part of our wellness program, a campaign going on where they actually can get points for participating in 10,000 steps a day for a period of a month. So we have different ways for them to obtain points. We have um, offered Tai Chi, again, the weight loss challenge. The one thing I want to talk about next, though, is the advanced care planning campaign. And this is actually something that we copied from the work that's been done in La Crosse, Wisconsin. And one of our physicians became very actively engaged and so went out and became trained, then took additional people to become trained and we've started with our own employee base for advanced care planning. And so it's end of life, what, what do you want done? And one of our directors is very active and speaks about this often because she said that when she sat down with her own parents, there were things that after her mother had passed away, she said, I thought I had done a really good job of identifying everything, but there are some things that come up that you just haven't covered. So that process is really important and it takes a long time for people to sit down and talk with family members about what is best for them and what they desire. 2017, we um, published walking maps for our employees so that they knew what the distance was if they wanted to take different routes. We actually now are beginning to work as a part of the built environment. And this process will probably take another 18 months to connect some walking paths between our organization and the private school that I talked about because it is right down the street. They have another um, walking trail that they had put together and they're actually doing some work on that walking trail so we'd like to integrate those two. 
Uh, we also then, as I said, became the second approved Blue Zones restaurant. And I talked about the removal of the soda. We also took the salt and pepper shakers off the table. Those shakers are available. I think we have two sets of shakers on a condiment table, but they're not on the table. We've offered financial wellness seminars to our employees because I think that's really important. There's a very powerful video clip that is put together by Cleveland Clinic. And it shows employees in a healthcare organization and it shows little clips of what is in their mind. So they're passing, they're going on the elevator, they're passing each other. But I think one thing that is really important for you to understand as employee employers is every employee has a different stressor. They have a different, they're going through something. They have a story. And one of the things that Mel has brought forward for us is something called dream managers and it's talking about what are the dreams of each employee. Sometimes it's simple things and sometimes it's something very significant like they want to buy a house, but they don't know how to go through the process of saving and to get to that point. And so that financial piece for sense of well-being is really important. We recently just changed the dress code to allow sneakers for people in regardless of their position. And yes, I do wear sneakers with my suits at work. I know it doesn't look very nice, but it doesn't really matter because I personally found that if the sneakers were in my office and not on my feet, I didn't put them on as often. When they were on my feet, I walk more. And so that's just a small thing that you can do. And walking does not cost any of our employees anything. And that's one of the things we were looking at. How can we implement something that's not going to be costly? So this is our program results, 2013 to 2017. And this is where I'm going to let Mel talk because she knows this best. I think this is on okay. I'm just gonna stand back here and just give you a quick kind of overview. So as Kim mentioned, we started our wellness program in 2013. So um, you can see the participation rate, even for our first year, I think in healthcare was pretty high at a 65%. Um, and then we continued to progress with um, increasing measures. One of the things that um, we're really proud of that we instituted back in 2016 was actually a spousal requirement for our biometric screenings. So you can see participation rates um, will reflect that based on that year. And some of the, the key things that we're noticing are the reduction in, in tobacco users, um, because we do have that as a requirement as a part of our program. You can be a tobacco user, that's fine, but you're required to do education about um, you know the effects of using tobacco and what that can do. And so we've steadily seen it, uh, you know, a decrease in overall tobacco utilization. And um, in addition, um, we've seen a progressively higher percentage of participation. Um, up until this last year, we noticed we, we had a little de decline in spouses, so we've got to do a little research to figure out um, what that trigger was and um, continue to, to vet that through. But overall, a really nice improvement in involvement and participation from our team members. And one of the messages that we talk with our employees about is as healthcare providers, people look to us to be leaders. And so if we don't step forward and show by example, they're not going to trust us. Sorry. So the one thing I want to say in ending is it starts with something small, but you can make a very large impact if you get people involved. And so I would encourage you to think about what you're doing and what you could do. We had some of our businesses that we went to meet with and they had done some very simplistic things to improve and encourage walking. Buy one of the laminated maps of the United States, have people that are interested get together in teams, take push pins and at the end of every week move them the number of miles they've walked as a team across that map till they reach the other side of the United States. There are lots of things that are not costly that can be done. But the important part is to start, and to start talking with your employees and understand what it is that is a barrier to them. We did not force this on anyone. We've asked them all, think about what you would like to do and how we can support you in that journey. Thank you very much. <laughs>